This is the first lesson in the trigonometric functions un uh, unit, which is called Modeling Periodic Behavior. Uh, by the end of today's lesson, you will uh, describe what a periodic function is, define the terms cycle, period, and amplitude as it relates to a periodic function, and determine the value of a periodic function at various points within its domain. So, if we look at this graph over here, we have a periodic function. And that's because we have a pattern of y values that repeat themselves again and again. So as you can see, down, up, down, up, and then I've done it over here, down, up, down, up, and it just keeps going. And also even right here, down, up, down, up, the same uh, pattern again and again. So the function on the left is called a periodic function because it has a pattern of y values that repeat at regular intervals. A complete pattern is called a cycle. So down, up, down, up, that is one cycle. You can start the cycle at any point on the graph, but the cycle ends when the pattern begins at its next repetition. So I chose to start it over here, right? However, I could have done a cycle starting from this low point here and gone up, down, up, down, and then again, up, down, up, down, right? Um, but I just chose to start it over there, okay? As shown in the above diagram, a period is the length over which one cycle takes place. So if we look right here, one cycle will take place over this period, right? And one cycle, if we want to start from here, would take place over this period. However, uh, the period is going to be the same for a periodic function. So. Referencing the diagram above, the period is four units. So which of the following two functions below represent periodic functions? So if we take a look at them, um, we're gonna look at this one, we're gonna look at this one. Is this one a periodic function? That is, does it have a repeating pattern of y values that take place again and again? Well, it certainly looks like it has a pattern because it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. However, it is increasing over time, right? So the y values are not being repeated again and again. So this actually is not periodic. And that is because y values are not repeating. Okay, if we take a look at this graph over here, Let's see if this is periodic. So we'll start right here at um, 0, 4. We go down, up, down, up. Again, down, up, down, up. Ah, so I can see definitely that I've got a pattern of repeating y values. So this is certainly periodic. And the question asks, I'll go back to my question, is if they are periodic, state the period. Well, what's the period over which this graph repeats itself? Well, 1, 2, three, four, and then again, one, two, three, four. So this graph has a period of four boxes, but as we can see, each box is two. So the period is four boxes, which is equal to eight units. And that's because each box was two units according to the scale, right? So there we go, so the period is eight units. All right, given the following, um, given the following periodic function, determine A, the period, B, the function at four, and then C, the function at 18. Okay, so let's start with A. Let's determine the period. Well, we can uh, redefine what the word period means by going back up here. A period is the length over which one cycle takes place. Okay, so I'm going to go back and look over here. What is the length over which one cycle takes place? Okay, each box represents one unit, so let's find the period. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then as we can see uh, a new cycle begins so the period in this case 
is 7 units because after 7 units a new cycle begins. The next question right here asks us to evaluate the function at 4 or to find the value of the function at 4. Okay, So if I look at 4, what is the value of the function? The value of the function is 1. So f at 4 is equal to 1. But um, if we look at this next question, it says evaluate the function at 18. Well, 18 is off this graph. So how am I going to read 18 off the graph if it's not even on the graph? Well, uh, the fact of the matter remains that this value of f at 4 is going to repeat itself again at f at 11, right? So as you can see here, there's a um, period of 7 units. So what I can do is I can say f at 4 is equal to f at 11, right? And we can just look at it on the graph right here, f at 4, f at 11. That's because it has a period of 7 units, right? So f at 4 and f at 11, if we look at that, I have added 7, right? Because 7 units will take me to the next um, equal point in the cycle. So if I want f at 18, well if I look, that's going to be just equal to f at 4 and f at 11 because that's just simply another plus 7. So off the graph if I went another 7, I would have the same y value as I had at f at 11 and at f at 4 and that is 1. Okay. So in general, for a periodic function, f with period p, f at x plus n plus p, right, so the period is p, is equal to f at x. Okay, so this looks kind of weird, but this is no different than what we've done here, right? is in this case we had a period of 7, right? So by adding 7, that is simply equal to the same value as it was um, 7 units prior, right? So n is just an element of integer values. So if you don't quite understand this, um, all this is just saying is that if you just keep adding periods to the function, you're going to end up with the exact same point on the graph. We'll read it again, restate it over here. This means, not this is means, that this means that the value of f at x will repeat at regular intervals of the period p. The n in the above statement refers to the number of cycles from the position of x, right? So if I went one cycle, I would add seven. If I went two cycles, so one and two to f at 18, I would have added 14, right? Okay, so the key take home message for this page is that a periodic function repeats itself. One cycle is a complete pattern and a period is the length over which one cycle takes place. Okay, we're gonna flip over to the next page. Okay, now we're gonna look at the amplitude of a periodic function. The amplitude of a periodic function is defined as half the distance from the maximum value of the function to the minimum value of the function. Okay, so amplitude is defined uh, as one half f at x the max value minus f at x the minimum value. Again, it's half the distance from the maximum value of the function to the minimum value of the function. So if I looked at these two graphs right here, uh, determine the amplitude of the functions below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what f uh, at x max is for this function. So f at x max, what is the maximum value for this periodic function? And if I look here, it looks like my maximum value is 4. Now I need to find the minimum value. The minimum value here is 0. So if I want to find my amplitude, Amplitude is equal to half 
times the maximum value minus the minimum value. Maximum value is 4. Minimum value is 0. So this is half of 4, which is just 2. So the amplitude is 2. Let's take a look at this graph over here. Same idea. Okay. I'm going to find the max value. My max value here is 3. My minimum value here is negative 1. So the amplitude is 3 minus minus 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, and I mean we can see that, um, we can even just look at it, is defined as half the distance from the maximum value of the function to the minimum value of the function. So you can see right here that this is the maximum value of the function right here, that's the minimum value. So um, the amplitude is from here to here, or from here to here. That's your amplitude. So your amplitude is two units, or your amplitude is two units. Okay. So example one, Kelly is jogging on a straight boardwalk beside the ocean. The boardwalk is 800 meters long, and Kelly begins jogging from one end at a steady pace at a steady pace of eight kilometers an hour. Um, given the above information, the following graph explain uh, Kelly's motion. Okay, so the boardwalk is 800 meters long, and she begins starting from one end. So she runs down the boardwalk, then she comes back, runs down the boardwalk again, then she comes back. So, uh, given the above information, the following graph explain Kelly's motion. So she runs down and back to times. Okay, So if we were to talk about a periodic function, this is a cycle, that's a cycle, so she has two cycles. So determine the period and the amplitude of Kelly's motion. Well, let's just remember what is a period defined as. Okay, A period is defined as the length over which one cycle takes place. So as you can see, I said this is one cycle right here. So the length over which one cycle takes place, the period is 12 minutes. Now, uh, amplitude is half the distance from the maximum value to the minimum value. So it's like the midpoint between the maximum value here and here. So if we looked at this, what is the midpoint right there? You can even just look at it. And I would say if I was to just look at it, that's the maximum value, that's the minimum value. So the amplitude is from here, from 0 to 400, or from 400 to 800. So that's going to be about 400 meters. Okay, But we can actually use the equation as well. Amplitude is 1 half the uh, function at the max. minus the function at the minimum. Okay, And so 1 half, the maximum value of the function is 800. The minimum value of the function is 0, so that's equal to 400 meters. And I already said that by looking at it, I could see that the distance from uh, the low point to the middle is 400, or from the middle to the top is also 400, so that's just the amplitude. Okay, and state the domain and range. So the domain um, is, uh, and actually we could say state the domain and range for the graph, and then also we'll do one for one cycle. Okay, so we're going to do one for the graph and for the cycle. So if I just look at the domain for the uh, graph, it's between 0 and 24 minutes. So I'll just say um, 0 less than t. And I'm using t because look at my domain there. It's given as t 
less than or equal to 24, such that t is an element of all real numbers, okay, because it's continuous. And then my range is, um, as we can see here, it's in uh, D, right? Uh, so it goes between 0 and 800. So 0 is less than or equal to D, which is less than or equal to 800, where D is an element of real numbers. All right, so if we just do it for one cycle, though, okay, if we do the domain and range for one cycle, We will go, one cycle is from 0 to 12, so we would just write 0 less than t less than 12, such that t is an element of real numbers. And the range for one cycle is, so let's go right here, okay, so it's between 0 and 800, so 0 less than d less than 800, where d is an element of all real numbers. Okay, thanks for watching. The homework is at the bottom, uh, so you can um, complete these questions right here. Thank you.